Driving along Bridge Creek Road and admiring the unusual scenery, the traveler couldn't stop to think about the history of this beautiful place. Let me tell you a little bit about things that happened in this part of the earth. A couple of centuries ago, native tribes such as Yakima, Nimapu, Umatilla, and others who spoke Sahaptan dialect lived in this part of Oregon. They inhabited the lands along the Columbia River and the northwestern coast of the Pacific Ocean. For thousands of years, they lived in harmony with nature, enjoying its generous gifts. They hunted deer, fished for salmon, gathered blueberries and herbs. But this rich land was interesting for other people. And in the beginning of the 19th century, expeditions in search of gold and furs began arriving. Very soon, the Pacific Fur Company was established and successfully operated in the region. An experienced hunter, trader, and miner, John Day was accepted to one of such expeditions. A tall, handsome, and reliable man, no longer young, Day with his team were headed to Fort Astoria at the mouth of the Columbia River. On their way, Day fell ill and together with his friend Ramsey Crooks, lagged behind their expedition. Having overcome the illness, hunters continued their journey and reached the place where the Macho River empties into the Columbia River. But here they faced another failure. They encountered hostile Indians who took their clothes and personal belongings away. Only a miracle could help these hunters pull through and get to the fort in safety. Subsequently, a place where this unpleasant incident took place, as well as the Columbia Tributary Stream, was named in honor of John Day. But like all rivers, regardless of their name, John Day River carried its water and changed the landscape. Washing the soil out, exposing it to erosion, the river revealed the lower layers of the earth, which kept lots of fossils and millions of years old history causing the earth to open all of its secrets. These revealed secrets of the earth's history in this region attract thousands of archaeologists, geologists, and paleontologists. The John Day Fossil Beds National Monument is visited daily by nature lovers, adventurers, photographers, and artists. Finally, my goal is achieved. I'm on the top of the hill at Carroll Rim Trail. An amazing valley strewn with hills has appeared before my eyes. Sutton Mountain, a 4,694 foot peak, rises in the distance. It points upwards into the clear blue sky, forming part of the eastern backdrop of the Painted Hills unit of the John Day Fossil Beds. But it seems to me that this peak is not the central figure of this scenic picture. My attention was attracted by a group of smaller, unusual hills which harmoniously fit in the landscape and have their own individual peculiarities. Smooth in shape without sharp peaks and ridges, these soft hills gradually ascend from the ground. As if covered with a huge piece of suede fabric, they look smooth and have beautiful lines of cascading folds to the ground. The shapes of these hills are not so amazing as their attractive color. Their horizontal lines are painted as if with a talented artist's brush and have the perfect combination of red and green colors. At various times of the day, as well as at different times of the year, they tend to change its color. It is this colorful palette and its surrounding nature that tells interesting facts about the history of our planet. Here's an interesting one. Around 100 million years ago, this part of the continent was the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and the coastline was at the level of nowadays Idaho State. With the advent of the Cenozoic era 66 million years ago, under the influence of Teutonic forces, this part of the land began to rise and the shoreline moved to the west. At the times of the Eocene period, 44 million years ago, numerous lava and mud flows generously covered the land, burying forever the plants and animals met on their way. Tropical and subtropical fruits, 
roots, branches of the trees, seeds were canned and turned into fossils. Archaeologists still find fossilized palm leaves here, along with avocado trees and other subtropical plants, which are 50 million years old. At that time, the climate in this region was warmer and more humid than in the 21st century. Also during geological searches in this area, scientists have found the remains of large mammals such as an aminigant, an early ancestor of the rhinoceros, a hyenodon, a huge ancestor of hyenas, a patriophelus, a giant cat that was able to grab prehistoric horses. One epoch was replaced by another. New forest grew in the place of lava flows and was also destroyed by volcanoes such as Mount Hood. These changes resulted in formation of the famous colored chemical composition. The black layers are represented by brown coal that grew in the banks of ancient rivers. Argillite, silt, and argillaceous slate add gray color to the palette. Red color has laterite, which was formed by the bottom fluviatil when the climate in the region was humid and warm. Nature did its best, and the results of its numerous creations and destructions are now witnessed with admiration. This landscape captivates visitors and gives the impression of being on another planet. I invite you to follow me along the Leaf Fossil Trail. Take delight in the views of Sagebrush Prairie with a picturesque feature called Laurel Hill. As well as other painted hills, it can tell a lot about the past of this area. Around 30 million years ago, a hard-leaved forest was found on the territory of this arid prairie. The climate changed to the warm and humid when the forest looked more like a jungle. The climate was characterized by concrete seasons. The forest was surrounded by beautiful lakes and marshes and consisted of the ancestors of present elms and alders, beech and birches, maples and oaks. Every year the forest dropped from the crowns of the trees tons of foliage. This foliage was discovered forever covered with volcanic ash in the lower layers of Laurel Hill. The leaves that were found during research in this area showed that such species as a metasequoia grew here. It should be noted that this tree was considered to be vanished, but in the early 20th century, its living specimens, though at risk of extinction, were found in China. Not long, only 0.2 miles, Painted Cove Trail is one of the best accessible trails. Its boardwalk takes you to the real Painted Hills. The name of the path speaks for itself. It's very colorful and surprises even experienced hikers. The trail leads along the red and golden clay hills and receives its color from ferric oxide. This is a truly amazing sight which I cannot stop looking at. The best time for enjoying the hills is sunset, when the day with its unbearable heat is fading and slanting sun rays add an additional volume to the hills, making their color more vivid and deep. Let me share an interesting fact concerning the clay. 
This clay can be used in many fields and is widely used in the cosmetic industry and for medicinal purposes, and is considered to be a biologically active substance. Adding it to the feed and to fertilizers increases yield and productivity. Clay is also used in winemaking and other fields. Red Scar Knoll Trail is the newest route at Painted Hills Unit. A flat trail runs around the picturesque hill of red and purple argillaceous slate. On the way, you can encounter small groups of cedar and other lonely trees that stay in perfect harmony with the yellow burnt grass. The time flew by quickly, and I'm back to the famous Painted Hills. I decided to look at them from a different angle, and in the evening. Painted Hills Overlook Trail is the perfect location, and is situated opposite the Carroll Rim Trail. In the evening coolness, the hills look quite different. The condensed moisture is absorbed by clay hills, saturating the colors. The soothing landscape of this place is simply amazing. The sun leaves last rays on Sutton Mountain, immersing colorful hills at dusk. Another day is added to a multi-million year history, and now only stars silently admire the unusual colorful hills of Oregon State. After exploring all the sites of Painted Hills Unit, 
I drove to Sheep Rock Unit, which is also considered to be fascinating and attractive. There are five trails that expect me, each one with its peculiarities, all of them located in the John Day River Valley. Blue Basin Overlook Trail runs in the John Day River Valley, which is rich in minerals and bright green vegetation. Local farmers enjoy all the benefits created by nature, and from the trail, you can observe their farmland. This wonderful 3.4 mile loop trail opens views of the mountains with gorgeous bluish tint. These hills created from petrified volcanic ash. Special minerals found in the soil in quantity add this magical bluish tint. The trail is quite dusty and may be impassable during rain. Precipitation created a special and distinct look of these hills and they resemble sand castles created by a playful child's hand. They stand naked without vegetation, as their mineral composition is unfavorable for grass and trees. Admiring the unique landscape, I traveled to the place where I could observe extraordinary mountains. Flood of Fire Trail took me there. It's short, 0.25 miles, and gently ascends and crosses a ridge, taking hikers to a viewpoint that overlooks the John Day River Valley and the surrounding basalt cliffs. At this time of the day, the gray cliffs have a special turquoise hue and stand out against the yellow-brown hills, covered with withered turf.
Running at the bottom of the canyon, the trail with gradual ascent surprises tourists with blue and green colors of the walls. This 1.3 mile trail opens old historic fossils of prehistoric animals and plants. The volcanic ash that was turned into stone can tell a lot about the history of the state and the entire continent. Traces of volcanic activity and changes in the environment are printed on the cliffs along the trail. Fossils found here are very rare and valuable for science, so they are protected by law and must not be destroyed. Please be very attentive and stay on the trails. These special paths are devoted for exploration by tourists, so avoid leaving the trail. Do not damage fossils that rest on the ground and haven't been discovered yet. According to the fossils that have been found, there were over 100 species of mammals, including dogs and cats, saber-toothed tigers, oreodonts, ancestors of sheep, horses, and camels. The remains of turtles, possums, and large pigs have also been found. Over 60 plant species were fossilized in the layers of this soil. It was known to have peas and hawthorn, mulberry, pine, previously mentioned menisequoia, and other deciduous and coniferous trees. Today, the flora of the park is diverse thanks to 80 soil types, which are scattered among the hills and are mixtures of minerals of different consistencies. Juniper, wild rye, mugwort, elemis, Indian fescue, and wild barley can be seen throughout the park. Look, here are some large representatives of the park's fauna. Prong-horned antelope. Rocky prairies is their favorite place of this habitat. They differ a little bit from deer, which you can also meet here. If we talk about the differences, first, deer have no gallbladder, and secondly, they have different horns. You can easily distinguish a male antelope by beautifully branched horns. Antelope are very shy, but fast. Their speed and ease with which they move remind me of the flight of a bird. The main predators which antelopes need to avoid are coyotes and cougars.
I continue my journey along Story and Stone Trail. This is an easy and short hiking route where you can even walk with children. The trail is flat, wide, and even paved in some places. It also offers spectacular views of the ancient geological formations, which have bluish and turquoise tint. Going down to the John Day River, I found myself in a green oasis, surrounded by high hills. Here, hikers will find the offices of the rangers and a farm, a museum with exhibits of agricultural machines of different times, some of which are very old, when horsepower was used to make some of them work. You may also see equipment with a combustion engine. Walking through these abandoned instruments of hard work on the background of the majestic landscape, I thought about the multi-million year history of these hills, which I compare with the life of the old rusty machinery. The life of the cars seemed long to me, but not in comparison with the life of fossils and the colorful hills that surround me. This life is a drop in the ocean of history, how quickly time flies. And human life is even shorter than the life of the machinery. It's too short. The empty stable where horses once rested after their field work plunged me into a meditative state. And so, to brighten up, I went out to the river. A clean and shallow creek was bawling among the rocks, surrounded by green stripes of tall grass and bushes, along with willows. On the opposite side, stepped mountains, sometimes overgrown with rare trees, showed their colorful side bearing soil erosion and a beautiful and calming view. Looking at this creek, it's easy to imagine the story of John Day, his skirmish with the Indians, and the fact that the scenery hasn't changed a lot since those days. While I was thinking, I almost stepped on a rattlesnake lurking in the tall grass. Be careful and cautious. Look not only around, but also under your feet. The third and not large unit of John Day Fossil Beds National Monument is called Clarno Unit, and it's the farthest located from the nearest town. A visit to this part of the park is the last thing for many hikers and tourists, but the most ancient prehistoric fossils are concentrated here.
vertical high cliffs raise on a hill as if the walls of a fairy castle. These are called palisades, and they represent basalt columns that were created from volcanic lava millions of years ago. They were subjected to erosion, thereby acquiring a majestic and somewhat frightening look. Fossilized remains of animals, trees, and plants from the time when this had been called a wet tropical jungle were found among these rocks. These silent and severe at the same time giants have survived a lot in their lifetime, but they stay firmly and confidently like knights peering into the distance. Arch and geological time trails run along these beautiful columns. If you follow this trail, you'll be able to reach the height of about 200 feet and to enjoy in the rocks the extraordinary arch created by time and erosion, as well as petrified logs and traces of ancient rainforest immured in the giant boulders that are scattered along the trail. John Day Fossil Beds National Monument is open all year round, and there's a special paleontological center named in honor of Thomas Condon, geologist and paleontologist who studied the local fossils in 1864 and basically introduced the world to this unique place. The evidence of the existence of elephants, camels, and saber-toothed tigers in Oregon are gathered in the Thomas Condon Paleontology Center. John Day Fossil Beds National Monument is a unique place that attracts a great number of tourists and hikers. Breathtaking scenery, simple hiking trails, numerous historical discoveries, all the components of an exciting journey in one place. You just need to find time for this amazing adventure.